moved here, there were no flowers. There were no trees, really, except one big cedar tree. And then as, as time went on, we made uh, a larger garden south of that. Then we, uh, there was a ravine on the west side of the driveway, and we cleared it all out because it was brush and uh, started planting the hillsides with hostas and shade plants, a lot of unusual trees. Got like 50 Japanese maples. <laughs> well, we have different areas. Uh, certain areas we'll put annuals in, other areas we have perennials. Uh, I do a lot of shrubs also, a lot of yews and boxwoods and spirea, things like that that I prune. Yeah, you're always changing things because th some things don't work out. So uh, occasionally you'll, you'll have one that dies for whatever reason, it's, uh, a disease or uh, I've got one ash tree, which they're saying the ash, this ash borer is almost here. And so it'll probably, a few years it may be gone too. And some don't like it. I had a sequoia tree, <laughs> okay. But it, it did not like the climate here. It, it lasted about two years to quite just just quit. <laughs> but it was kind of not neat to have a sequoia tree. Uh, the Japanese garden I, I cleared off a stretch that went to the pond and I tried grass but there was so much shade I couldn't do I couldn't raise grass there so there was maybe a 20 or 30 foot circle of moss in the center of it so I said well I'm gonna raise moss so I did and just scoop up moss by the tubs full and bring that bring it down here and just pat it on the ground and it gradually expanded I'd put golden vicary privets in one of my knot gardens and they weren't doing well, so I dug them all up. In fact, there's too many colors. And I said, well, I'm gonna do with these 50. And so I said, well, I'm gonna make me a mound. So I made me a pyramid of dirt and I put these on. So I made me a golden pyramid. That's what, that's what that ended up being. So I just gradually, we have, uh, I just do it. I have some, a couple acres on the south end of the property that I've not done anything with yet, and that's potential. Go to an antique store and if there's, if there's something unusual that we like, we usually end up acquiring it. Airplanes, I just, sleds, well, I got most of the ones that were common and some that were uncommon, but they only made, there are only so many manufacturers of sleds that, that are really unique. I like chairs. I got all kinds of wooden chairs and different kinds. Uh, you can look around here and just see all kinds of oddball stuff. <laughs> I started collecting musical instruments. And I, uh, a couple years ago, I found uh, this guy was selling at an antique bocce, bocce balls old ones back in the 20s and they actually had inlaid ivory with the guy's initials and stuff on them. They were really, really fancy and I never played it before, never ever saw it played, but just it was just interesting so I bought a couple. Uh, 
I don't really, know, I don't have, I never have a plan. I just, if it's something that catches my eye, I just like it. And uh, it's just, what we have here is just kind of unique. We keep adding to it. I'm uh, uh, Richard Bangert, and uh, B-A-N-G-E-R-T is the way you spell my last name.